You're watching Kamna TV, not just another channel. Welcome to our news. The headlines. Zest call to increase national load shedding to 12 hours due to reduced power generation. More problems for Bill 10 absentee PF MPs as Speaker disowns their council malfunction claims. PF cadres Innocent Kalimanshi and Nathan Piri fire missiles at Stephen Kampiongo. And in international news, USA vote count continues amid Trump legal challenge. And in sports news, FIFA, FAS and aggrieved parties virtual meeting takes off. For the details, join me shortly after this break. Msika is here. We have you all covered with just 150 kwacha. You can advertise every day from 17 hours to 18 hours. For a 30 second ad, get the benefit of selling your products and services on Msika. For more details, call our marketing department on plus 260-953-995099 plus 260-962 four 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 seven two six or plus two six zero nine seven one one seven seven four six seven email us on info at camera tv africa dot com terms and conditions apply with the details my name is liseli kanyanga a financial analyst, Mambo Hamaundu, says the poor performance of the Kwacha against other major convertibles will hamper debt repayments. Zambia's external debt stands at 11.97 billion United States dollars, and as of the 7th of October 2019, the mid rate Kwacha per US dollar exchange rate stood at 13.1. Percent rising to 20.5 by 5th November 2020, representing a 39% depreciation in over 12 months. Recently, the Bank of Zambia explained that the Kwacha's rapid depreciation has been attributed to low foreign exchange sales from the mining sector and an increase in foreign exchange demand for the importation of agriculture and medical supplies. But Mr. Hamaundu believes that the factors driving this are mainly associated with external forces and the production structure of the Zambian economy, which is dependent on imported products. Individuals of personalities, but just going to city market, these people who sell oranges, apples that are imported, they'll tell you to say that because of the dollar, you know, the, the commodities they are selling have become expensive and uh, unaffordable, out of reach to the so called middle class of our society. So it is hampering uh, business development for these people in, um, in city market. And, uh, and of course, when you look at it from uh, a higher perspective, we, are, we have where a country which is highly indebted, it is making our cost of debt servicing exceedingly high. And it is really posing um, a threat on um, the economy of this country because of our level of indebtedness. You can imagine if we, if we had to pay our loans in January, would be paying at the rate of 14 and you have to pay our, our loans now would we'll be paying at the rate of uh, 21 we will be paying 50% uh, more just an example if we had to pay 10,000 kwacha we now have to pay 15,000 kwacha for a, a similar loan and that is the problem that is the pressure that uh, the rate of exchange is actually putting on the lives of uh, the ordinary people and even on us as a country and when you're looking at um, remedial measures you must look at it from a perspective of uh, where is the pressure coming from the demand pressure normally comes from uh, the aspect of debt servicing it comes from um, importation of uh, agricultural inputs it also comes from importation of crude oil and when you look at uh, these three that i've mentioned Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says Zambia will continue to experience load shedding of at least 8 to 12 hours on a daily basis beginning this Sunday. Mr. Nkua, in a ministerial statement in Parliament, explains that this is because power generation will considerably reduce due to activities of the dam filling for the Kafue Gorge Loa. The minister says activities at the Kafue Loa will have a direct impact at the Kafue 
Kiwe Gorge Upper Powerhouse, whose power generation will be maintained at a level to control load management. He says the planned commissioning of the Kafue Loa on the 8th of November 2020 will result in Zesco restricting generation upstream at the power station by closing the division gates at Kafue Gorge Dam, thereby reducing water dispensing from Kafue Gorge Upper. With all this, Mr. Tankoa says the nationwide load management will maintain level three of the weather induced power deficit of 2019, which translates into eight to 12 hours of load shedding daily. The plant commissioning of Kafue Gorge Lower, Zesco Limited, will have, will have to restrict the generation upstream at the Kafue Gorge Upper Power Station by closing and division tunnel and by closing the diversion tunnels and gates at Kafue Gorge Lower Dam, thereby reducing water dispensing from Kafue Gorge Upper. Mr. Speaker, as a result of this reduced power generation, the activities of the new dam feeding will result into increased load shedding. First 24 hours, it will be... I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. As a result of this reduced power generation, the activities of the new dam feeding will result into increased load shedding. First 12 hours a day, as power generation will be considerably reduced. During the subsequent six days, reduced generation at Kafue Gorge Upper Power Station will be maintained at a level to control the rate of filling up the new dam. The nationwide load management program will maintain a level three of the weather-induced power deficit of 2019, it's called WIPOD 19, which translates into eight to 12 hours of load shedding. Mr. Speaker, once the dam is successfully filled, the first two generator units, each with 150 megawatt capacity, will then be commissioned. It is expected that the first unit will be commissioned end of November 2020, while the second unit is expected to be commissioned at the end of December 2020. The last three of the five generator units are expected to be commissioned in 2021, bringing the total to 750 megawatts online. Once this historical stage of the dam fitting is completed, the preparation of firing up the first 150 megawatt generator will then be expedited towards easing of the current 810 megawatts power deficit. Under fire, ruling patriotic front PF Kada Innocent Kalimanshi has refused to work with Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo. It is not exactly clear what Mr. Kalimanshi, a man who has consistently said without him, President Edgar Lungu wouldn't have become president, meant when he said his allegiance is to President Edgar Lungu and not Mr. Kampiongo. Mr. Kalimanshi made this running commentaries at the Lusaka's Magistrate court grounds as police led him and others to a police van after a court appearance. Innocent and two others are facing three counts of assault charges the trio has denied. More in this report. After spending approximately one week in custody, three ruling patriotic front PF cutters have finally been granted a cash bill of 10,000 kwacha each with two working sureties from reputable institutions. However, what was exciting as the trio were being led away from the magistrate court grounds were their strong weights against Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo, whom they have told in the presence of police officers that they will not follow him as their support belongs to President Edgar Lungu. Kamni TV had no opportunity to asked the trio why they seemed hard on Mr. Kampiongo and what exactly he would have discussed with them to warrant their statement of never wanting to work with him. Why 
Kamli TV is following this matter keenly and is making every effort to converse with the Home Affairs Minister. The trio, namely Innocent Kalimashi, Nathan Piri, and Capson Mwanza, are facing three counts of assault, thereby occasioning actual bodily harm. The trio is accused of assaulting Isaac Banda, Muhammad Mutali, and King Zinyambe on the 26th of October 2020 in Lusaka's Chaoma compound. But when the matter came up for plea before Magistrate Tandosa Chabala, the accused pleaded not guilty. The trio was arrested on the 28th of October 2020 in relation with the fracas that happened in Chaoma compound on the 26th of October 2020, in which some unruly patriotic front PF cadres clashed and ended up causing disruption of peace in the area, according to Zambia Police Inspector General Kakoma Kanganja. They further took to the street of Chaoma and blocked some roads, thereby causing panic and fear to the public. Both PFSG Davis Muila and Lusaka Province Chairman Paul Monga have disowned Mr. Kalimashi, saying he's not their member. The matter has since been adjourned to the 24th of November 2020 for commencement of trial. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamri TV News. Meanwhile, suspended Patriotic Front Eastern Province Youth Chairperson Emmanuel Banda, commonly known as JJ, has pleaded not guilty to one count of assault. When the matter came up for plea before Lusaka High Court Judge Justice Winfred Muma, Banda denied having assaulted a police officer at Lusaka's Central Police Station. In this matter, Banda is jointly charged with John Lungu, Maxwell Pito, Moses Silionde, and Lyford Piri. More in this report. Report. The man who is accused of storming Lusaka Central Police Station and beating up an officer on duty, Emmanuel Banda, has pleaded not guilty the second time before the Lusaka's High Court. The suspended Patriotic Front Eastern Province Youth Chairperson, Emmanuel Banda, commonly known as JJ, made his appearance this morning before Justice Wilfred Muma to answer to the allegations of aggravated assault on a police officer. In this case, allegations are that the former PF youth leader, together with his co-accused John Lungu, Max Wopitu, Moses Slyonda, and Linford Piri, attacked Lusaka Central Police Station, allegedly stole some money, and in the process, assaulted a police officer. JJ was committed to the High Court by Lusaka Chief Resident Magistrate Lamek Mwale, but the state entered a nolle prosecute and rearrested him and brought him back to the Lusaka High Court with the same charge. The prosecution had stated that due to this reason, they were left with no option but to discontinue the case. However, instruction from the DPP indicated that the accused be rearrested. The matter has since been adjourned to November 11, 2020 for commencement of trial. Miriam Kemba. Reporting for Kamne TV News in Lusaka. Socialist Party leader Fred Membe says Zambians should not allow themselves to be silenced by anyone in discussing the eligibility of President Edgar Lungu ahead of the 2021 general elections. Mr. Membe said it's the right of every Zambian to scrutinize candidates vying for any political office in Zambia. He says he is alarmed that President Lungu and his promoters do not seem to realize that the exercise of power must be a constant and practice of self-limitation and modesty. Mr. Membe's comments comes in the wake of reprisal from some sectors of society who have advised those saying that President Edgar Lungu does not qualify to stand again to stop it. But Mr. Membe in a media statement has maintained that the law is very clear and it is against President Edgar Lungu. He has since asked Zambians against allowing President Lungu to seek a third term bid. President Edgar Lungu whose eligibility has been a subject of debate for a while now. When we say that President Edgar Lungu is not eligible to contest the 2021 presidential elections, it is not out of hatred or fear of losing to him. Even if Mr. Lungu was a very weak candidate who could be easily defeated, our position doesn't change. The principle and requirements of the rule of law do not change. We may have chameleon-like politicians, but our country's constitution does not change in that psychedelic way. We are saying this is simply out of principle, out of respect for the rule of law. And this does not require very complicated legal arguments. 
It is a very simple and straightforward matter. And put simply, Mr. Rungu has been elected to the office of President of the Republic of Zambia twice, and he has been sworn in as President twice, serving two terms as President. The issue of his first term being less than three years does not arise or apply here. It arises when or applies to a person who assumes the office of president as vice president without being elected, when the president dies, resigns, or is removed from office for any reason. Mr. Rungu did not assume office as vice president and without elections in 2015. He contested presidential elections twice and won. You can call us all sorts of names, threaten us in all sorts of ways, accuse us of all sorts of things, but that will not change this reality. It doesn't matter what legal gymnastics they will try to play, they will not succeed in changing this reality. They can ignore it, but that will not change this reality. The government has acknowledged that the fact that they're incorporating the full value of ecosystem services into the wealth of a country through natural capital, accounting, and the benefits that people derive from them is very important. Minister of National Development Planning Alexander Chiteme notes that the natural capital accounting will enable Zambia's measure and value the links between the economy and the environment, analyze sustainability of the use of natural resources and the use of data in national and local planning as well as public policy making. Mr. Chiteme said this during the launch of the technical report for the forestry, land and water natural capital accounts in Zambia under the World Bank led wealth accounting and valuation of ecosystem services programs. More in this report. The three technical reports on forestry, land and water demonstrate that Zambia is on course to actualize enhanced sustainable development by ensuring that natural resources are mainstreamed in development planning and national economic accounts. Speaking at the launch of the reports, Minister of National Development Planning Alexander Chiteme expressed gratitude to the World Bank for its continued support. Countries measure economic growth through the GDP. However, it is clear that GDP is not a significant indicator of sustainability because it does not, it does not value the cost of environmental degradation or recognize how natural resources are being depleted pursuing economic development. GDP does not also recognize the need of communities who depend on the natural resources for the day-to-day -day survival. Therefore, incorporating the full value of ecosystem services into the wealth of a country through the natural capital accounting and the benefits that the people derive from them is very important. And the Water Accounts Technical Report indicates that there is a significant amount of water that is unaccounted for given the amount of water that was withdrawn from rivers and aquifers by water utility companies and what was reported as utilized by various consumer categories. Minister of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection Dr. Jonas Chanda expressed concern that a very high proportion of water supply in Zambia goes to waste without being accounted for. And I wish to take this opportunity to assure the World Bank of my ministries and indeed government's commitment towards the smooth implementation of the key steps in ensuring that water accounting plays a significant role in contributing to Zambia becoming a prosperous middle-income country by 2030. Meanwhile, Minister of Higher Education Dr. Brian Mushimba said the land natural resource account is key to national development, therefore commended the team for putting up a rich technical report. The key findings from the land account is that uh, the forest cover and wetlands have reduced over time, while build up and cropland areas have increased. The interpretation is that Zambia may be losing a forest at the expense of agriculture and building expansions and urbanization. And it's therefore important that we understand these interrelations, interrelationships, so that as government 
the appropriate policies are crafted to see how we optimize uh, this the, co the coexistence. The World Bank acknowledges the receipt of Zambia's request for further support to extend the WAVES program. One only hopes a positive response will prevail. Patrick Soko, Kamnet News in Lusaka. We take our first set of commercials to stay with us as we have more interesting stories lined up for you. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Stay home, stay safe. Times have changed. With the advent of the coronavirus, Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company would like to advise its esteemed customers to avoid visiting crowded places. You don't have to move to pay your water bill. You can do it in the convenience of your home. You can pay your water bills through Zanako Zapit, Stanbic Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, and FNB. You can also use Airtel, MTN, and Zamtel Quacha Mobile Money Transfer Services. For any inquiries to report a fault, please contact our customer service on plus 260-211-251-571, plus 260-975-618-618, and toll-free line 5957, Zamtel only. You can also simply email customer service at lwsc.com. This public announcement is brought to you by the Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company. Water is life. Sanitation is health. Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with the news. Speaker of the National Assembly, Patrick Matibini, has put to rest claims by PF Chifuwu constituency, Member of Parliament, Frank Ngambi, and his one Sabombwe constituency counterpart, Kabaso Kapampi, who have blamed non-performance of their parliamentary consuls, leading to them failing to vote for the dead and controversial Bill 10. According to the MPs, their consuls had malfunctioned during the voting process. But in his ruling in Parliament, Dr. Matibini says the MPs must not blame the system but themselves as there was no malfunction on any system as being claimed. According to the Speaker, the MPs must instead blame themselves for not voting for the bill. He explains that if the MPs' consuls had recorded some malfunction, the MPs could have raised the concern with him other than keeping quiet. The ruling Patriotic Front PF through its Secretary General Davis Mwila has written to three PF members of parliament who did not vote for Bill 10, resulting in its death to exculpate themselves within seven days. In his point of order, Dr. F. Rand MP alleged that his vote could not be registered because his consul froze. However, investigations have revealed that if he indeed is consul froze, as alleged, he would not even have been able to log into the system, let alone to press the present and yes options, as alleged in his, in his letter of complaint. At any rate, if his consul had indeed frozen, as alleged, he should have immediately alerted me. And I would have in turn instructed the ICT officers in the chamber to assist him 
Forthwith, I've come to the conclusion that on the material day, Dr. F. Nandi MP logged into the system as required. He, however, did not select the present key, which would have been activated to enable him to vote. For, contrary to his assertion that his vote was not recorded due to a system failure, Dr. F. Ngambi's failure to register his vote was as a result of his own failure to press on present. But Northwestern Province Information and Publicity Secretary Emmanuel Samapimbi has advised the PF against harassing the MPs, saying they just exercise their democratic right on the matter at hand. Mr. Samapimbi, in an interview with Kamnet TV News, explains that the refusal by the three MPs to vote for the bill clearly shows how toxic it was to the Zambian people. We have uh, seen letters uh, making rounds on social media which have been written by the PF Secretary General, Mr. Davis Muller, to three PF MPs, namely Mr. Frank Ngambi, or should I say Honorable Frank Ngambi of Chifubu, Honorable Elayro Msonda of Kamfinsa, and Honorable Kabasoka Pampi of Mwansabo Mbwe. As UPND Northwestern Province, we wish to advise the PF and its leadership to stop harassing MPs who decided to be on the side of the people during the voting of Bill Number no. 10, which took place on 30th November uh, 2020. We have noted with concern and uh, disappointment the PF Secretary General uh, can request members who were only doing what their constituents told them to do, number one, and then number two, Members of parliament who know exactly what is good for the Zambian people and who understood that the process was bulldozed by their party. That is why they didn't want to support an illegality that was about to legalize dictatorship. We have always indicated as UPND that the PF is not a democratic party. And true to our words, they wanted to bulldoze and force MPs to do what was not right. To the MPs, from where we stand, the ones that are affected, the three, please, I know or we know this will be a very turbulent uh, moment for you because, uh, of course, the party believes that you have to do something which only benefits them. But because you know why you are in parliament, you have done something which is right for the Zambian people. But you should remember that when you are with the people, then you are on the right side of history. And posterity will not judge you harshly. And moving on in the news, a 29-year-old assistant accountant at the Ministry of Higher Education has pleaded not guilty before the Lusaka Magistrate Court for allegedly stealing 96,789 kwacha from the Ministry of Higher Education. Mr. Archie Mabuya, 29, is charged with six counts of theft by public servant contrary to the laws of Zambia. Allegations are that Mabuya, in 2016, while working for the Ministry of Higher Education in the Department of Industrial Training Center, ICT, as an assistant accountant, stole 96,789 kwacha at different occasions. When the matter came up before Magistrate Kaunda Sakwanda, the accused pleaded not guilty and the matter has been adjourned to the 6th of January 2021 for commencement of trial. And in, still in the news, Lands and Natural Resources Minister Jean Kapata has urged the working class against depending on their monthly salaries as their only source of survival. Ms. Kapata says Zambians must begin thinking outside the box other than waiting for government to provide them with opportunities as there is too much demand from the public. She advocates for the creation of cooperatives by Zambians so as to benefit from the various empowerment programs government is offering. Ms. Kapata said this when she officiated at the launch of the Zambian Nurses and Midwives Multipurpose Cooperative Society in 
Lusaka Thursday. The minister observes that the cycle of poverty will not be broken if citizens are not being proactive. Meanwhile, cooperative chairperson Abel Tonga says the cooperative is mainly managed by nurses and midwives. Lands and Natural Resources Minister Jean Kapata says the working groups should strive to think outside the box by making sure that they engage themselves in other economic activities. Speaking when she launched the Zambia Nurses and Midwives Multipurpose Cooperative Society in Lusaka Thursday, the minister says people should not be held captive by their salaries, which are not enough in state. They should strive to create other sources of income. Ms. Kapata, who is a nurse by training, says government supports such initiative and is hopeful that it will go a long way in helping many people. I'm a registered uh, theatre nurse. I understand, <laughs> I understand the challenges that the nurses and midwives face, which is why this move has excited me. And I know without a doubt that with the birthing of the Zambia Nurses Midwives Mark Papers Cooperative Society Limited, the face of this sector will never be the same again. A happy, <laughs> thank you. A happy health personnel transitions into a happy and health nation, as the health services given will be quality, enabling people. To recover quickly. The longest time we have seen our health personnel live under abject poverty due to unsubstantiated debt as well as exploitative uh, loan schemes which leave very little to be desired. With this initiative we believe that there is going to be uplifting of the living standards that will see an improvement in the livelihood of all levels of our membership. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a well-known fact that many developed nations have reached these levels of development because they ensured to involve those that are directly affected and were eager to enforce change they so wish to see. This calls for a serious mindset evolution if challenges have to be faced head on. Meanwhile, Cooperative Chairperson Ebo Tonga says the cooperative is managed by nurses and midwives whose aim is to ensure that the nurses are economically viable members of society. The main aim of this cooperative is to mobilize our members um, from among nurses and midwives in Zambia and the diaspora so as to advance the agenda in agriculture, aquaculture, education, real estate, mining, small and medium business entrepreneurship in order to create a platform and robust vehicle necessary for achieving better livelihoods, income generation, maintaining the dignity and the plight of the nurses and midwives. This cooperative is entirely owned and managed largely by nurses and midwives. The sole focus is to ensure that economic lives of nurses and midwives is changed for the better. Sharon Kalimbola, Kamnet News, Lusaka. An Nakonda teacher has been committed to prison for failing to pay a fine of 60,000 kwacha ordered by the Nakonde Magistrate Court in February 2020. Catherine Nankamba, aged 30, of Muzabuela Village in Nakonde District, was in February this year convicted of two counts by the Nakonde Magistrate Court and sentenced to 12 months simple imprisonment for each count to run concurrently. In 2018, the anti corruption Commission arrested Catherine Nankamba and charged her with one count of uttering a false document contrary to section 352 and 347 and one count of obtaining pecuniary advantage by false pretenses contrary to section 309 respectively of the penal code chapter 187 of the laws of Zambia. 
particulars of the offence in one count are that on a date unknown, but between 1st January 2012 and 31st January 2013 in the Nakonde district of the Muchinga province of the Republic of Zambia, being a public officer, namely a teacher employed in the Ministry of Education, Nankamba did knowingly and fraudulently utter a false document, namely a teacher's certificate number 4,288 to the district education board secretary purporting that the said document was genuine when in fact not. Under count two, the particulars are that on a date unknown, but between the 1st of January 2012 and the 31st of January 2017 at Nakonde, in the Nakonde district of the Muchinga province of the Republic of Zambia, being a public officer, named a teacher employed in the Ministry of Education, Nankamba, did dishonestly and with false pretenses purport to have a primary teacher's certificate in order to be employed as a teacher by the district education board secretary under the ministry of education and was so employed by virtue of what she obtained a pecuniary advantage in the form of salaries amounting to 184,000 kwacha. Miss Nankamba is now currently committed to the Nakonde Correctional Facility where she will serve six months of simple imprisonment. This is contained in a statement issued to Cabinet TV News by ACC Public Relations Manager Timothy Mono. On that note, we take our second set of commercials. Do stay with us as we have international and sports news. Don't go away. And why do you look so pale and busy scratching yourself? Mm. You know my skin is very sensitive. I've tried all the skin products and nothing seems to work. Have you tried Oracle Pure Glycerin? Oracle Pure Glycerin? What's that? Just give me a minute. Oracle Pure Glycerin gives your skin a youthful and healthy glow. Ish, you're glowing. <laughs> Don't tell me. Yes! I already know the secrets. Oracle Pure Glycerin! Try Oracle Pure Glycerin for that perfect skin. Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with international news. Americans continue to watch and wait to see who will be declared the winner of Tuesday's presidential election. Currently, Biden is projected to have won 264 electoral votes, Trump 214 and 270 are needed to win. Alaska, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina and Pennsylvania are still counting ballots and winners have not been projected in those states. Arizona has been projected for Biden, but as as the count continues there, his lead has shrunk. Here's a, here is a roundup on the story. The result of the U.S. election remains in the balance this morning as votes continue to be counted in key battleground states. Joe Biden is inching overnight with reports suggesting he'll take more key states today. But the Trump campaign is taking legal action in several areas, calling for counts to be stopped. So far, 43 of the 50 states have declared their results uh, with the Democratic candidate Joe Biden on 243 electoral college votes and the Republican Donald Trump on 214. And the number needed to win overall, it's probably imprinted on your brain by now and uh, therefore to occupy the White House is 270 electoral college votes. Uh, this first report today is from our North America correspondent, Ben Wright. There are still millions of votes to count, and this presidential race is not decided. Looking to see... In Georgia, Donald Trump kept the narrowest of leads over Joe Biden as ballots were tallied late into the night. It was a scene repeated in the handful of states that will now decide this election. At the moment, it's Joe Biden sounding confident. 
He currently has more electoral college votes than his rival and chalked up vital wins in the Midwest. Michigan, a Democratic gain, and Wisconsin looks to have gone the same way. Here, the people rule. Power can't be taken or asserted. It flows from the people. And it's their will that determines who will be the president of the United States and their will alone. In Nevada, the two candidates are neck and neck, and the state will release more results on Thursday. And in Arizona, once a Republican stronghold, Joe Biden stayed slightly ahead while election officials counted the remaining postal ballots. After President Trump prematurely declared victory and erroneously claimed in a tweet to have won states he hadn't, Republicans filed a string of lawsuits and complaints. We're going to win Pennsylvania, but they're trying to cheat us out of it because they know it's their only path to victory. They know it's the only path to victory. And so we came here today, we met with all our lawyers. Uh, we are going to file suit in Pennsylvania. After an attempt by the Trump campaign to stop the count in Michigan, the state's chief election officer called the lawsuit meritless. We're focused on getting this right in a way that can withstand any court challenges. Uh, I'll also mention, and we've seen this not just in Michigan, but in other states, a lot of times court challenges or allegations are thrown around to further political agendas as opposed to actual legal claims. We could still be waiting a while to discover who the next president will be as an unprecedented volume of postal votes are counted. But it's the current occupant of the White House who is trying to catch up. We now get into sports news. The long-awaited and anticipated FIFA FAS and aggrieved parties meeting has finally taken off. The meeting was held virtually with only nine, with only ten invited guests. Meeting resolutions have not yet been availed to the public. It was in this meeting that the aggrieved parties were expected to present their case before FIFA. FAS in retain was expected to respond to the questions raised by the aggrieved parties with FIFA making the final conclusion after studying the matter. The meeting follows a complaint by former Football Association of Zambia FAS president against the Zambia's FA's integrity committee's decision to bar him from recontesting the FAS presidency. Other than FAS, FIFA and aggrieved parties, the meeting was also attended by Ministry of Sports officials and National Sports Council of Zambia. That sports item brings us to the end of the news, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. Zesco to increase national load shedding to 12 hours due to reduced power generation. More problems for Bill 10 absentee PF MPs as Speaker disowns their council malfunction claims. PF cadres Innocent Kalimanshi and Nathan Piri fire missiles at Stephen Campiongo. And in international news, USA vote count continues amid Trump legal challenge. And in sports news, FIFA, FAS and aggrieved parties virtual meeting takes off. The Kamnet verse of the day is coming from the Book of Lamentations 3 verse 27 and it reads, And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. On behalf of the entire news production crew and myself, Liseli Kanyanga, thank you so much for watching Kamnet TV News on Kamnet TV, not just another channel.